Well, I mean, I think that that'll, um, you know, again, be a fluid situation. You know, we'll keep looking through a lot of different options and, you know, whether we bring guys to work out, whether we, you know, sign guys, you know, see who, you know, kind of comes available and work through some things. We're obviously going to need one. Ray, does Fox surprise you a little bit? Um, and how encouraging is it that he can be available this soon? Uh, very encouraging. You know, Dylan worked extremely hard uh, to get back out here and through conversations with his surgeon, our doctors, Dylan most importantly. You know, just excited to get him back out there. And, you know, again, I think it's um, – you know, we're, we're probably a, a, a little bit away from from team, you know, but I think it's also important that, you know, when a player gets to a point that he's done kind of rehab and that he gets back out there with his teammates and individual and we'll figure out group things and then we'll see where he is. Can he be a right tackle option for you guys? In the I think he can, you know, certainly I want to just make sure that, you know, see how he feels before we start making him an option anywhere. I think this, the first step is just getting him out there. Back on the kicker situation, is it, has it frustrated you that you've not been able to find anybody to stabilize that position the way that you have at the punter position? Um, by you mean having Brett Kern here, well, you know, before Kern, 12 years or 15 years, or however many years he was here before me. Um, no, not not frustrated. Is it more part of the challenge that it's not easy to find kickers who can, you know, do what you're, you know, in, to, to kick in this league? There's 32 of those jobs. Yeah, I'm, let me know when Justin Tucker's available. Another guy who's not being let go anytime soon. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, we're just going to keep finding, uh, you know, keep evaluating guys and. You know, again, we're, we're, we're going to need one, and uh, we're obviously searching like everybody, not everybody else, but a handful of teams. There were some good kickers available in free agency during early free agency, no? Uh, there's kickers going to be available at different times throughout the year, and whether that's free agency or tomorrow or next day. Stonehouse have any experience doing kickoffs? Uh, if you needed, it, if you needed to use, I don't him think in that that's capacity? something. I don't think that's something that again, it would be an emergency thing. It's not something I think we really want to explore. Um, just from a mechanic standpoint, I injury. I don't think that that's something that he's, you know, trained for. He he could he could do it in an emergency and did do it, and you know, we're just. I was ready to do it, but yeah, I don't think we would start there. How much, I guess, the lingering injuries make it difficult this time of year when you're trying to make, get down to 53, deciding how long. Well, I think that's part of it, and seeing how guys are going to, you know, do you have to carry them? Do you have to, you know, are you going to put them on IR with some sort of designation and for a return? And you know, all part of the process of getting to 53 tomorrow afternoon. Before the season, about tweaking your, your training regimen to two days on and then a one day walkthrough. What did the data through training camp show you how, how that went? Uh, from a soft tissue perspective, I would say, you know, in training camp, good. You know, again, I think some of our injuries, most the majority of our injuries occurred uh, during games. You know, so we'll have to see where that goes and. Continue to monitor it and you know, try to make sure that everybody's ready to go. And you know, when things come up, address them, treat them. But you know, I think that through training camp, I thought that the you know we we didn't have. I didn't feel like we had a lot of receivers or DBs with hamstring issues or things like that that normally would would show up with that you know those position groups. I feel like this is kind of the new formula you're going to take forward then, that this really had an impact on that? Um, we, we weren't far off, you know, from this last year, you know, again, with the jog throughs. And if we look back, we, we did this similar thing last year. Um, so I think that that's, you know, it's where we were this year. We'll see where it is next year when 
see if we're see where we're at. But I mean, I thought that the guys handled it pretty well as far as just how they approached the day and were able to get work in and uh, install and go out on the field and, and just lower the volume. With the offensive line, what's left between now and, and the season opener that, that you have to accomplish? Tackle position for you to, to name a guy to be the starter. Uh, we, yeah, we're, right now, we, you know, Chris is the starter. That could change. Justin's here. Dylan's getting to practice. You know, we're we're going to work through. You know, Jalen hopefully be back out there today. You know, keep practicing, keep competing. You know, things can change. It's nothing that's set in stone throughout anywhere. You know, maybe a few positions, but. Yeah, I thought they responded well yesterday to to some of the corrections, conversations coming out of the game, and and you know, I think they know what what we expect or what what I expect, and the, you know, the ability to protect the guy with the football, whether that's when we run it or whether we throw it. Mike, how is the little Levis feeling? Are you hoping to get a full week of practice out of him? Uh, yeah, I anticipate Will being out there. I think he's you know. For a young player, I thought he stayed really engaged in, in what we're doing offensively and, you know, just had a professional approach to, to not being on the field, which some guys it's difficult, you know, they lose focus because they know they're not practicing or, you know, maybe not playing in the game. I felt like just his preparation leading up to the game was lockstep. I saw him communicating with uh, – with Malik and the coaches. So you know, there's just a lot of maturity there. You know, through players' career, they're going to deal with some sort of absence and, and how they handle it. And so I thought it's a pretty good start for Will. Nicholas, out of the building, does that start Monday? I think that starts after after tomorrow. And and, and, and there's going to be some modification here. You know, you know, Nick will be back after, I think, three games into the building, allow him to, to, to lift and work out here and, you know, be involved in meetings, just nothing with practice. So that's good so that he can come in here, he can, can work out, he can treat, be at meetings and just not have any involvement with practice or be at the games. Do you feel like now with the opener on the horizon, like the bulk of the issues you had last year outside of injuries are fixed to, to your satisfaction and been addressed? The issues? I mean, we're going to have issues every year that we're going to have to deal with. Right. I'm not. But last year's, like that, that you're starting at a point where you feel like. I mean, I think everybody does. I, I think that's where you go in at. You know, you know, take care of the football and turn it over more. If you could tell me that's going to happen, then I'll tell you, yeah. But I mean, you, you practice and prepare for it. But you know, what matters is what you do out on the game. You know, practice is important. I understand that. We believe that. Like your, your your ability to, to make plays on the practice field lead to to what you do in the game. But also, you have to go out and do it in the game. You have to you have to block them. You have to tackle. You have to turn the football over. You have to be able to take care of it protect the quarterback and make contested catches and all those things. So how do, how do you get the confidence level that what you've done through practice translates in the game, or is that just what you see against New Orleans is what you get? I, I'm not really sure. I know that we've had some really good examples of us making plays against Minnesota, um, us making plays uh, in, in the game against Minnesota, us having, you know, running a four-minute operation closing the game out we're going to need to do that hopefully in 17 games I, I would I don't think it'll be 17 but I'd like it to be but we've also had examples of us you know playing man coverage getting off the field affecting the quarterback uh, we were able to throw the ball you know what one thing I thought was was really cool coming out of the game was that we went in with some specifics on on special teams and on defense and on offense and you know, we averaged 10 and a half yards an attempt uh, in the game on offense. Uh, so we were able to hit some plays down the field. We got a really cool DPI penalty that was going to go unnoticed from Chris Moore, but came back. Guy wasn't playing the ball. 
those are things we coach. So I guess that translated. Uh, we talked about the net on the punt team. Right? We worked that. We worked drills on that. And then to go and be able to show the guys after the game that here's the, the net. You know, we're not following guys down maybe in the same lane like we were in, in Minnesota. Or after the vice, you know, incident with the, with the returner, with Kyle, which is unacceptable, you know. Early on, our, all our vices on the punt return were, were good. Um, you know, so those are, those are things that I think that we can point to. When we go in and say, hey, here's the focus. Um, this is what we're concentrating on. Let's see if we can't get it done. And then when you do it, then, you know, we showed the team on, I guess, whatever it was yesterday. Good, you know. I mean, I think he was one of the guys that we had talked about about improving on the kickoff, first kickoff against Minnesota. He was a backside two, didn't quite necessarily squeeze tight enough, running like heck, but just didn't squeeze tight enough, and you know you can't bend and make the play. So that was another example we talked about um, improving there, um, and, and we saw that on our kickoff coverage. So, and, and you know, Julius is. He's locked in, he's involved, and he's engaged in the meetings and, you know, translating to his willingness to go down there on a kickoff or be on a wing on a punt team or, you know, off returner or returner on a kickoff return. Jeff was talking about he and Landry teaming up against Kia and Autry for some kind of internal competition. You like when guys come up with something to, to ramp things up, practice situations and stuff like that? Yeah, I think that the energy, the competitiveness, I think is great. Um, you know, those guys work together a lot you know, out on the field, and the more that they can have those types of conversations and understanding on where guys are at, whether they call a game or not, or just being able to play off each other, and you know, those instinctive players that can continue to communicate with each other. Hopefully, they can help each other. Just have you seen Trey Avery? Next steps for him in this uh, Trey's just kind of shows up, doesn't say a whole lot, does his job, competes. Um, you know, getting him more comfortable down the field. You know, I mean, we're going to have to, you know, continue to rep those things downfield. The ability to, to to play the football and look back and play the football and not lose ground. You know, is something that all our DBs can continue to improve on. Just understanding the rules that they're going to give you more leeway with contact when you're when you're looking playing the ball. The the downside of that is sometimes when you play the ball, you can kind of lose some ground on the man, and that's the challenge and that's stuff that we've talked about. So, you know, there was instances against uh, Justin Jefferson and SMB in Minnesota and playing the football, leaning back, but also not drifting and letting three yards of separation go for, for a catch. So you know, I think that you know, back to what Paul had asked, that there's examples. And when those things come up, we try to show them. Um, so Trey's, that's something that he could work on. But he's a one of our most competitive uh, hold up guys on punt return. We feel comfortable putting him in a single. And, and he's going to compete. So th love his competitiveness. Love, you know. His, doesn't say a whole lot, does his job, tries to use the techniques that we that we ask of him. Caleb Murphy had four sacks in the three games. What more did you see from him on film other than what kind of jumped out? Um, right. That's what it is. You know, I mean, these guys get into a pass rush situation, and he was able to to affect the quarterback in multiple ways. And, you know, ran a couple games, had. Nice moves in Minnesota. Um, you know, needs a, to continue to try to find a role on special teams. You know, would love for all our outside linebackers that, that don't play a bunch of snaps or you know heavy load to be involved in special teams. That's something that that goes on pretty much everywhere. Bad news in the next 
Well, I would say that, you know, starting with the, the 53 that the roster, you know, I mean, we need to prove ourselves every day. Like this is, this, this business can, you know, nothing's guaranteed and what the roster looks like on Wednesday, it's going to be different than what it looks like a week from Wednesday and so on and so forth. That's, that's, we're always going to be looking to churn the roster. That would be my message to them is that's not the time to, to relax and, and take a deep breath. Um, and then unfortunately we will have to, to move on from some players, uh, do it in, you know, whether we bring them back or we don't try to tell them that if they ever need something that they've shown well for themselves and that we would call anybody that they need me to call and help them however we can help them and, you know, know that we could possibly bring you back if we don't bring you back on the on the initial wave of the practice squad. You know, you know, when you try to make a connection with them, it is difficult. And, uh, you know, but we all know that not everybody's going to make it.